We got everything different between the M1 iMac and the M3 iMac. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. So we've been waiting, what, two years now for these new iMacs to come out. And are you happy or are you disappointed, all right? Number one, I think we're all a little disappointed that these things didn't ship with a M3 Pro. So the M3 Pro chip is not in these things, just the standard M3. Is it fast enough? Is there a big enough difference between the M1? We're gonna talk about that. Obviously, some people even said that they won't fit the, the, uh, the M3 Pro in the chin of this iMac. I can't I don't know if I can believe that. Apple wouldn't make that big of a mistake, or maybe they just knew that they wouldn't put it ever in here. Long story short, though, we didn't get the Pro chip, but we're getting the M3 chip, and so I want to talk about that. I'm going to go ahead in this video, and I'm going to talk about all the things that stayed the same, then all the things that changed. We're going to talk about some pricing and what you can get the M1 for now and the M3, and then we're going to show you some benchmarks versus the M1 and M3, and then also some GPU benchmarks for both of those as well, and then we're going to wrap up the video. So if you're thinking about buying one of these, you know, maybe we're all not that happy that the Pro chip didn't come out on these and there's not enough upgrades and stuff, but at least you'll know in this video what the differences are. So sit back and relax and let's get into it. All right, so some of the things that didn't actually change. So the design hasn't changed. The colors haven't changed either. You can you notice that right away. So the screen, still 4.5K, perfect screen. I think it's 500 nits of brightness, beautiful screen. So that really didn't need to change. The ports on the back, they didn't change depending on the model you get. So those are gonna stay the same as well. You can either get the two Thunderbolt or the two Thunderbolt and two USB ports as well, so four or two. So that didn't change in the back. The audio jack over here, that basically changed slightly and we'll get into that in a second. It looks the same, but there's some couple little small changes there. And then I think it's made out of now fully aluminum or full recycled aluminum for all it's worth. I mean, I don't know. Anyways, you get the idea. Apple wants to do that kind of thing. So overall, those are kind of the things that didn't change in the system. But there are a lot of things that did change, right? Um, but before I actually get into that, one thing that didn't change that's probably the most important is the price. And so if we look over here at the screen, you can see it's still $12.99 right here, all right? So that's not bad. The price kind of stayed the same. And you can see that here it is. You know, if you go with the, the cheapest model here, you get the two Thunderbolt ports. If you go with the upgraded model, you get the two Thunderbolt and the two USB 3 ports right here, plus the gigabit Ethernet, and you get the Touch ID and the keyboard. So those, those all stayed the same, all right? Price did too. Now, if we get into here, there's a couple, you know, we'll get into these differences in a second, but you can see that this thing, if you price this out with like 16 gigs of RAM, you know, you're up to 1499, that was the same. And then you can go up to 512, that's basically the same, another 200 bucks. But as you get up here, it's starting to get expensive. See this, 1699 for the base metal with some little upgrades here and there. Overall though, you know, it's, it's a tough, it's one of those things, it's kind of a, you gotta justify this if you're gonna wanna buy this system over something like the MacBook Pro. But overall, at least the pricing stayed the same on this version of it, all right? So the M1 chip, so obviously if we go over here, the M1 chip, if you wanna go ahead and pick up a refurbished one on Apple's site right now, you can see here it's about $1,049 right there. So it's about, you know, I guess 250 bucks difference than the M3 right now. Is it worth it? We're gonna talk about that in the end of it, but I don't think so for that cost. In fact, I think these things may drop in the holiday season, and these things, the M1s I'm talking about, may drop in the holiday season. So if you can get these at like around 900, 950, and there's a 350, 400 difference between the two, then we might start thinking about it. But I think for 250 bucks, it's worth it to get those two extra years of support on the OS. So, but you can pick up the M1 right now. I don't think Apple sells it on their main site, but on the refurbished site, it's only 1,049, and I'm sure you can find deals in other places as well. All right, so what are the things that actually did change on the system? So these are all the things that changed, all right? So we did have the M1 chip before, now we have the M3, that's three nanometer versus five nanometer, so it's a smaller nanometer chip, obviously. We've all heard about that. The, the old chip was 3.2 gigahertz, the new one is actually 4.05 gigahertz. Now again, it depends on the cooling and stuff. Some, we've been seeing reports where maybe it doesn't get as fast as that just because it hits kind of thermal thresholds but they're still pretty impressive. Stay tuned for the actual benchmarks coming up after I go through this list here. So on the old system, you can get seven or eight cores. On the new system, you can get an eight or 10 core GPU. So the GPUs can actually be increased on this new system from eight to 10 versus seven to eight. That's a pretty big difference there as well. The new system also has the new GPU, GPU architecture. It's also got dynamic caching, which we saw helps kind of with graphics and stuff like that, where it's yet to see how much that helps, but we'll have some examples coming up where it shows you that maybe it does. And then we also have the hardware accelerated ray tracing on only the new system. The old system did not have that. And then hardware accelerated mesh shading on the new system and the old system didn't have that as well. So we're seeing some changes here graphically, which is one of the reasons you might wanna pick the M3 up. 
All right, and then it says video decode engine, the old one had, but this one has a higher bandwidth video decode engine, so it can actually take in more bandwidth, so it helps with video decoding, which should help with the video rendering speeds, right? Then this one says hardware accelerated H.264 um, H and HEVC. The new one, the M3, has hardware accelerated H.264 HEV plus ProRes and ProRes RAW. So it's ProRes and ProRes RAW were added to that as well. That's actually a good increase. Um, on the old system, it didn't have any of these things as well. So ProRes encode and decode engine is only on the new one. Support for AV1 decoding is on the new one only. And then 60% faster neural engine is on the new machine. So the old one was 60% slower, the M1 was, than the M3. And that's on the neural engine. So that's a big difference as well. Then it says image signal processor. It's called ISP on the old one. There's now a new image signal processor. They re kind of revamped that. It's hard to kind of quantitate that, so it's just saying that it's new and improved. So that's one little change there. Um, now this is a couple of little things. So the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the old system was still pretty good. The new one, though, now it supports for high impedance headphones. So you can actually, it's a different type of plug, I guess. They, they have support for the high impedance headphones, which makes that a little bit more valuable. But overall, to me, it's not going to make a huge difference. All right, so for Wi-Fi, the old one had Wi-Fi 6. The new one has Wi-Fi 6E. For Bluetooth, the old one had Bluetooth 5.0, the new one has Bluetooth 5.3, that's a big change. Now, this is where some other changes come in. This is the bigger changes. So it says it's about 68.25 gigabytes per second on the memory bandwidth of the M1, 68.25 versus 100 on the new M3. So you're, you know, what I don't know what that is, about 40%, you know, 30 something percent increase in the bandwidth um, speeds and stuff like that. Um, the memory bandwidth, I'm sorry. So that's gonna make a difference as well. And then finally, you're able to get the old one and only eight and 16 gigabytes. On the new one, you're able to go up to eight, 16, and 24, which is actually a pretty good jump there. And as you know, you can, go, like I said, you can get some different cores in the GPU, which is gonna help overall. So those are the main changes, all right? Obviously, things that stay the same, like I talked about earlier, one thing I'm not sure I mentioned, just, you know, obviously, the keyboard and the mouse still uses lightning port, which is crazy. So that stayed the same. But these other changes are actually pretty cool because they're all different and they're gonna make this thing faster. So what does it equate to benchmarks? All right, so for benchmarks on the M1, we'll say the single core Geekbench 6 score was 2332 on the M1 and actually 3000 14 on the M3. So that's a pretty big jump, 2300 to 3000. 700 jump there, pretty big for that. The multi-core is even almost better, 8,317 on the M1 for multi-core, Geekbench 6, and it looks like it's around 11,625 on the multi-core right now for Geekbench 6 on the M3. So that's a big change. Let's look at that, 8,300 to 11,625, big jump there. And that's going to make a big difference with things, you know, certain things like video editing and stuff like that. Now it says the metal scores, now this covers GPU performance, made even a bigger gain. So if we look here, this is the Geekbench metal scores, 31,904 on the M1, and over here is 48,104 on the M3. So that's a massive jump right there. I don't know what that equates to percentage-wise. It's at least, what, 50% or something. It's a major increase there. And at the end of the day, that's going to help with a lot of things that you do that's going to, you know, take those kind of video editing and tasks, 3D rendering and stuff like that. It's going to make it a lot faster. And then there was a video that just came out by, by Luke Manani. He basically showed you the difference in rendering with the M1 chip versus an M, well, actually it was an M2 chip, I believe, versus the M3 chip. And these are just the standard chips right now. And what happened was it was pretty phenomenal as far as the speed differences. On the M3, I think it beat it by uh, quite a bit of time. I think it was almost like half the time to render the same video as the older chip, just on that standard chip. So even if you upgrade from the M1, which is even further back, you're gonna get a substantial gain on video editing, rendering time, stuff like that, even with the standard M3 chip. So just keep in mind that if you're thinking about buying something like this and you're thinking, will it be worth it? If you do a lot of video editing and you add a little bit more RAM to the system, maybe up to the 24s, it's gonna be a super capable system and it's gonna blow away the M1 in a lot of different cases just because of these different scores. Now granted, it's not, some things might seem the same if you're just browsing the web, doing email, stuff like that. Like that but when you get into video editing and stuff it is going to make a noticeable difference and he was showing scores like I said up to about half the time which is pretty crazy all right so at the end of the day should you get the m1 or the m3 well I think the m1 is still a great value especially if you can get it for like around nine hundred dollars or even refurbished for less than that that's pretty crazy I think it's the best all-in-one out there right now and obviously if you're a gamer you shouldn't be buying an all-in-one anyway but you shouldn't even be buying a windows one 
But I, you know, there's some good Windows ones out there, but I think these are still the best that you can get right now overall. And the M3 just you know, upped it up a little bit. So if that's $12.99 now, it's probably gonna be $11.99 around the holiday season. That's a steal, I think, for that system. And uh, you, know, you can't complain with the screen. That screen's worth six or 700 bucks by itself if you compare it to other you know, screens that kind of fall in that 4.5K range or 5K range. So there you go, you gotta you know, take that with a grain of salt. That's added to the system as well. You get all the different stuff, even though I don't even use the mouse, I don't like it. Overall though, you get the idea. I just wanted to show you the differences and if you should consider it. And you should definitely consider it if it's right for you. It's not the best all system out there as far as you know what we could have. We want that 27, we want that 32 inch, but this is all we got right now. And we wish we had the Pro chip. This is all we still got. We only got the M3 chip. Overall though, it's a surprising, you know, a lot of gains there. And I just think overall you should consider it, but it's up to you. There's a lot of options, including the MacBook Pro. So do your research, do your due diligence, and we'll talk to you soon. Peace.